Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to integrate the OpenKF library in your own project. So first of all, you need to execute this patch file so that it runs um, a set of CMake commands to generate the meta files of the library, build the library, and then install all the uh, files and binaries in your system so that when you try to build your own component with the CMake list, then uh, the find package here can find the um, the library. And we can start exercising this. Um, so here, this is where we uh, cloned the project. And to run this com this batch file, so I it's a must that you run it within um, a PowerShell or a pr command prompt, whatever, but in administrative mode. So we can open here and then we can type PowerShell. And then we can do right click, run as administrator. So here now the PowerShell is in administrator mode. And then we can go to D drive. Work set, coding corner, open KF. Yes, so then we run this patch file. Yes, so you see here that first it uh, generated the, the um, meta files, the Visual Studio solution. And then here it built all the um, projects within this solution. And then here it uh, starts um, installing all the files. So here we have the header files and the the, uh, the static library. So after doing this step, so if you go to the C drive, the program files, so here you can find that now the library is copied here or installed here so if you open this you can find that here there are two folders one for the static library or the binaries and um, here it has this um, cmake source files so this uh, these files are important in order that um, when you include this find package command in this in your cmake lists the, so it basically search for this file and this file then tells um, exactly the CMIC how to find the relevant files for this specific library and here in include we will find all the other files that we need from our library so then we can go back to so here we can start doing we can start doing some examples and this is an empty project so if we open here like we're using visual studio code for example so the main cpp is empty till now we have here the same list so uh, i copied it from uh, the um, the library project and additionally here i added the find package openkf so now we want to use the package from the openkf and here we do the linking and then here we add the um, include directory so now we can try to fill this include So now let's try to build so we can use the terminal from Visual Studio Code. So we create the build folder, then we go to the build folder, then 
we don't see Mick. Yes, so now this generation is done. And then we do build. So now the building finished. So we can continue by making the project develop the code from here, or we can uh, also use the generated solution here from Visual Studio. So we can run this. Then we can select here the main.cpp. Then let's try to include the open kf. Then let's say uh, Kalman filter dot h. Yeah. So here it finds the library. Then let's say here we define. So let's say that we have a state um, dimension of two and one measurement. Then the instant from the camera filter now you can see that we have the correction method, the correct EKF method, the prediction, the prediction EKF. So we can also we can also use the matrix. So let's um, let's define first the state vector and say that we have a state vector of dimension two. Then we have um, a two by two covariance matrix. Let's make it um, identity matrix. So now this is for the initialization and then can define the matrix F. So that's the transition matrix, the state transition matrix. That's the state co covariance matrix. And here the state vector. Let's make it identity as well. And then can define the process noise covariance. Yes, then we do predict. So the first element is the matrix F and the second element is the uh, process noise covariance. And what we could have done actually is something like this. So here we set directly the uh, state vector to the um, internal state vector of the Kalman filter instance instead of creating um, a local one here and then copy it to the internal state vector. So the same thing we can do with the process noise covariance as well. So 
So here we did the initializations. Then here we executed the prediction step. And then we can define um, the, um, we can start coding the measurement update. So let's say that we have vector. Um, so let's say that we have only one uh, signal as measurement. And we name this Vic Z. And Vic Z, let's say it measures here the position, and we would say that is 2.5 instead of 2. And then we define the uh, measurement noise covariance. So we receive, we say mat r, matrix r. And let's say that, so here we can give it process noise covariance, something like this. And then here, let's say that we are trusting our measurement more the initial state plus the covariance. So it would be, let's say, something like this. And the next step is to define the, the measurement model. So we can say the measurement model has a dimension of 1 to 2. So it will be like this. And in the measurement we are, so this measurement value is relevant or uh, similar to the first element here, uh, sorry, in the state vector. So it will, similar to, will be similar to this. So let's say, for example, the first element is position and the second element is velocity and here in the measurement we are measuring a position so we want to map the first element here to the measurement so this would be something like this okay then we do the correction step so first we pass the vec z then the matrix R, then the measurement model. Yes. And then the last step is to print the results. So let's see how it looks like. the process no here the state covariance yes oh. we need to select this project yes so here, the estimated state uh, starts to converge more to the position which is measured here, the 2.5. So if we decrease uh, this uncertainty of the measurement, we e will even find that the um, this value converge more to the 2.5. So let's say 
that now this is we are more confident of the measurement so you see here now it's very close to the 2.5 so now let's try to add like some correlation um, and let's for example integrate so the new position will be the old position plus the velocity and here uh, we can add just one here maybe I can make it like this so that you can uh, imagine it um, so this value now will add correlation between the velocity and the position state so till now if we check here you find that the estimated covariance has like um, zero of diagonals because there is no correlation at all between the velocity and the position till now so after we run this time this will be different so maybe we can return this back here then run again yes so as you see now the estimated state covariance has the diagonals of course and the off diagonals as well because now there is some un, some correlation between the velocity and the position and if we draw this ellipse of this 2d um, covariance you can see that it, you will find that it's um, tilted so not actually vertical or horizontal it will be tilted because now we have the correlations so that's it for this video i hope it was helpful for you so don't forget to like the video if you really liked it and you find it helpful and subscribe to the channel and see you next time